How long has it been since you studied the concept of holiness? If you're like most people, it's probably been a while. But today on The Truth in Love, that's going to be our topic, so stay tuned. Here's the message true and glad for the sinful and the sad. Ring it out, ring it out, ring it out, ring it out. It will give them courage new, it will help them to be true. Ring it out, ring it out, ring it out, ring it out. Ring out, barely ring the word. Speed it away, Lord man. Message divine, and see. Send it today, still far from it. Jesus. Send it live inside. Lost and lost in the doubt. Welcome to the Truth and Love program. My name is Eddie Parrish, and I'll be your host today as we study the Word of God. And as we begin, I'd like to encourage you to open your New Testaments to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1, and let's read verses 13 through 16. 1 Peter 1, beginning in verse 13. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. I read the story one time of a preacher who was uh, preparing to deliver his sermon on a Sunday morning. And just before the sermon, the song leader announced that the next song that they would sing would be the song titled, Take Time to Be Holy. And then the song leader said, we'll sing verses 1 and 4. And the preacher said that he got to thinking that uh, if we can only take the time to sing two verses of a song about take time to be holy. He said, I wonder if we're taking much time to be holy in our everyday lives. And he brings up a good question. If we can't sing an entire song about holiness, are we taking the time necessary as we live to be holy? One of the chief concerns of many Christians is happiness, not holiness. Sometimes that's what we seek. We seek in life whatever we need to be happy. And instead, we should be seeking to be holy. And if we do that, God will see to it that we're happy. But a lot of people have a concept about God that they want God to solve their problems. They like to turn to God when they have needs and pray to God and ask for God to straighten out their messed up lives, but they don't have any desire for the Word of God to change their conduct. They want God to solve their problems, but they don't want God interfering in the way they live. They want to live however they please and just turn to God when it's convenient for them and when they need to get out of a fix. Well, folks, those things should not be so. Holiness is a characteristic of God, and it should be a characteristic that we as Christians are concerned about. We should embrace the holiness of God and try to be holy ourselves, as the Bible calls upon us to be. I guess if there was one thing that the ancient Hebrew would have known about, would be the concept of holiness. If there was something about the law to which he was accountable that he could have remembered, it would be the emphasis on holiness that was built into that law, that was built into that system. And the book of Leviticus is a book that talks about and teaches holiness. When you go to study the book of Leviticus, it can be a tedious study because there's a lot of detail in the book about the various sacrifices that the people were to make under the law of Moses. And, uh, you know, if you're talking about an animal sacrifice, it was how you dealt with that, you know, how to cut up the animal and 
and how to burn it and which portion of the animal you did what with. I mean, there was uh, just a lot of detail and uh, with uh, all kinds of, of matters that related to their conduct. Well, the purpose of that was holiness to show the people that God expected them to be different. That he expected them to be holy, set apart. The uh, emphasis in the book of Leviticus is, be holy, for I am holy. That uh, commandment is found six times in the book of Leviticus. And that's what was quoted in the passage in 1 Peter that we read a moment ago. 91 times in the book of Leviticus the word holy is used. 71 times you find various terms that relate to cleansing or sanctifying, the making of things that are holy. 128 times uncleanness is referenced in the book. And so it's a book about holiness, the holiness of God and the holiness of God's people. And so let's talk about that concept, not just from the book of Leviticus, but from the rest of the Bible as well. First of all, let's talk about the holiness of God. The word holy itself means to be separated, to be set apart. And more specifically, to be holy is to be set apart for God's purposes, for special purposes that God has uh, marked off for us. And God is holy. God is different. God is set apart. There is no God like Him. He's the only one. And the scriptures point that out in a number of places. For instance, 1 Samuel 2, verse 2, No one is holy like the Lord, for there is none beside you. Psalm 99, verse 5 says, Exalt the Lord our God and worship at His footstool. He is holy. Psalm 99 verse 9, exalt the Lord our God and worship at His holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. Psalm 111 verse 9, He has sent redemption to His people. He has commanded His covenant forever. Holy and reverend is His name. And those aren't the only passages in the Bible that speak of the holiness of God, but they're sufficient to point out the fact that God is separate. God is different. There is none like Him. He is holy. And with God Himself being holy, one would expect that holiness would be seen in His laws. That that nature of God, the nature of His holiness, would come out in the laws that He would give for His people. And certainly that's true. Exodus 16, verse 23, uh, regarding the old law, the Bible says that the Sabbath was holy uh, because God had given it. Ecclesiastes 16, 23. The uh, priests were holy because they were set apart for special service. Leviticus 21, verses 7 and 8. Exodus 28, verse 2 says that the priestly garments were to be considered holy and were not to be duplicated for common use. In other words, what God had designated for the priests to wear, uh, the rest of the people were not to duplicate those garments and just wear them out uh, for their usual clothing. They were holy garments, set apart, separate for a special purpose. The tithe was called holy, Leviticus 27, verse 30. And so anything that God had set apart for a specific purpose was to be treated differently from common things. That is the nature of holiness. And so those characteristics of the law of God that were holy were things that came from the nature of God. And because God Himself is holy, we would expect that to be seen in His laws for His people. And so we've talked about the holiness of God. Now let's turn our attention to the holiness of God's people, how God expects for His people to be holy. Well, because God is holy, that's what He demanded of His people. And we mentioned that six times in the book of Leviticus you have that concept expressed. You be holy, God said, because I am holy. God wants His people to emulate that characteristic, to be set apart, to be separate, to be different, 